Greetings everyone, it's Chaplain J. I'm very excited to bring December's Holy Word. December's theme is Reconstruction. In my time of reflection and meditation, I asked God, what do the people need to hear at this very moment? And as I thought about the word reconstruction, I thought it would be a good idea to start with the definition. Reconstruction is an impression model or reenactment of a past event formed from available evidence. Reconstruction is an impression model or reenactment of a past event formed from available evidence. And in my days at Howard University School of Divinity, there was a quote that came to mind after reading that definition by Howard Thurman. The journey to wholeness starts with self. The journey to wholeness starts with self. So in the time that we are in, in this time of reconstruction, we start with self. Let us affirm this space. If you are able and willing, I would like to do a breathing exercise. Inhale through your nose and exhale slowly out of your mouth. Inhale, deep breaths. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Gracious one, we thank you for this day and the very breath in our bodies. As we breathe, let it be a release unto you that every time we exhale, it is being collected and we inhale fresh air that will rejuvenate our mind, body, and soul. God, we thank you for being a present help. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Now, O oh Holy One, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you and all your people. In your holy name, we pray, and it is so. 2020 has been a revealing year, and if I was to be honest, traumatic. It has hit us on different levels. The pandemic, quarantine, new norms, protests, the elections, senseless acts of violence. We have experienced loss personally and as a community with no assurance that we're going to return to anything that is familiar of how we used to operate before the pandemic started it has made us adapt and grow exponentially whether we like that or not it's like if i could use my imagination for a bit it's like some I don't know, monster or bully or beast just came out of nowhere and said, I'm, I'm going to wreak havoc. I'm going to wreak havoc. And these feelings of our freedom being robbed, feelings of isolation. And my heart sunk for those individuals who use school or work as a means to escape, you know, from their home life. And my heart still goes out to them and I still pray for them day to day. Personally, earlier this year, I was homeless in a studio uh, apartment in, in a hotel with an, a very active, at the time, two-year-old. So our experiences has hit differently and it did not help. I, for me, I speak personally for me, it didn't help when the celebrities jumped on various social media platforms from their 15 to 20, 30 uh, bedroom mansion saying stay at home. And with their cooks and caterers and nannies and everything of the above, 
we had most of us had to work with what we had in front of us and going out day to day for supplies I know for me it was very rough because two-year-olds tend to put their hands in their mouth a lot so I was very challenged during that time and the employment rate has went up big time and it feels like our freedom is kind of like on a leash so it the question right now is what what could we do I mean collectively we may feel uh, overwhelmed and just exhausted and if I be a little bit more honest some of us have been carrying baggage over the years and 2020 just applied a tremendous amount of pressure and it's to find where you are and how you fit in all of this how I and all this how do I move for, forward I feel like some of us we may be barely holding on but I just want to take two seconds to congratulate you on that barely holding on I, I know it sounds like you know stop you know no seriously I am very proud of you for how many of you I've seen on social media, my own friends and, and family, have been able to keep their head on their shoulders during this, this pandemic, during everything that's going on, even to the days where you feel like you were unproductive, even to the days you felt like you were just an autopilot. It's okay. And you have remained committed to maneuvering and changing and adapting to everything that's going on around you. And with, it's almost like a, it's, it's almost as if individually this year was an opportunity to look at ourselves and I, and I want you to know, I am very proud. I, I am. I'm very proud of everyone, even myself, of finding that strength, quick thinking, finding resources. As I had to constantly remind myself, and I want to remind you right now, you are divinely guided and supported. And everything you need has come to you. And if we take a look at the other side of 2020, and I know, I know immediately when I say that, what other side? Because it's all bad. It's been bad. It's still getting bad. And it's like, I just want it to be over. But I want to challenge that. How many of you have been praying for change? I can recall personally when I prayed for change, like the last time I prayed for change, it was December 2018, December 31st, 2018 to be precise. I pray for change. And when you make that request, when you pull, put that petition up and let that petition be known, God responds. As a matter of fact, God gets excited. Oh, you want something to change? Oh, you want something better? You think you deserve more? Hey, wait, wait. I know you deserve more. I know you want more. And I'm ready. I'm ready for you to move to that level. But it's going to take a little reconstruction. And it's going to take for those ugly things, those dark things to come to surface. See, God is on this go time. It's go time. It's time for you all to level up it's time for anyone who is just ready who's like this right here this is not it this check to check this uh i don't know having to pinch pennies rob peter to pay paul and and to make these quick changes i i don't want to do this if this is how the economy is going to roll i need to be able to stand strong so that i won't live in a constant fear 
And God said, and I hear you. And you deserve that goodness. You deserve that comfort. You deserve that luxury. You are worth it. God is ready to work and ready to move. And do you have to start from scratch? Is this something you have to start from scratch? No. You don't have to start from scratch. That's the reconstruction. It's an impression model or reenactment of a past event formed from available evidence. This year has toughened a lot of you up. This year, I know for me personally, I, I'm, I, I'm speaking for anyone, I'm speaking for myself. Personally, this year has toughened you up. It's taught you to fought, fight back. I've seen a lot of people push back for individual rights. Even seen people push for those who are not able to advocate for themselves. You follow the guidelines reported price gouging. The fight is there. The fight in you is there. And with all the loss that we have endured with our loved ones, families, and friends, we, we hold those who are present with us a little tighter. And those who feel like leeches, bye. I ain't got time. I don't have time for anyone to drag me down. I'm trying to hold on. I'm trying to stay focused. I'm trying to keep moving. You got to go. You have got to go. You're not serving me my highest good right now. So, it's like this, this is now the time where things that are not pretty comes to surface. If I could just insert an example right here before I move to the next portion. What do you do when your garbage disposal doesn't doesn't work anymore? You call a repairman. And that repairman comes in and pulls out all the gunk and everything that doesn't allow it to operate so it can fully be functional. And that is what God is now challenging us to do. This year has challenged many of us. And everything that's been sitting there slowing us down to keep us from moving forward is brought to the surface. It's brought to the surface. And it is, and it's scary as it seems. Again, I remind you right here, God is supporting you. You are divinely guided and supported. God has got your back with all of God's excitement ready for you to level up and move forward. God is ready and willing to move you into your highest good. Your self-worth is being challenged. Your self-love is being challenged. Your courage is being challenged. Anything that is not pushing you into your highest good has to go. And you have to understand that everything is not meant to be loving like. Everything, I mean, even if I bring up the song right now and I just say joy, I'm sure some of y'all can finish that sentence, that song lyric. But everything is not meant to be love and light. This, when you think everything is love and light or feel like you should be in a place of glee and happiness, you should be there 24-7. That will bring an unnecessary disappointment. Because in your journey, in our respective journeys, the, it involves exploring and coming to terms with the deepest and darkest part of ourselves. And finding that balance of light and dark will help one to become the best version of, of themselves. And God wants you to become the best version of yourself. The ability to live a life of comfort and to bring healing in the process. This work will allow one to reconstruct various areas of their journey to connect to their highest good. So it's okay to be afraid. It's okay if you have an off day. It's okay. It's okay. Just keep moving. Keep going. Every day is a new day. 
If you didn't get everything done on your to-do list, it's okay. It's okay. There's tomorrow. There is tomorrow. We are able to move at our individual pace. A lot of people think there is a clock ticking. I've seen it across social media. Don't let these platforms fool you. Just because you see other people flourishing and things happening for them does not mean it's not going to happen for you. So this is a great time to start to take a look within yourself. And when your emotions get in disarray, like I, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, I'm, I'm exhausted, I, 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 just, I just don't know. A couple of things that I would leave you with at this, at this time when you're dealing with your emotions. One, God is not intimidated by your emotions. So you can let God know. God, I'm upset. I'm upset because X, Y, and Z. God, I don't, I don't like what's going on right now with this person, with this situation, at this job. I don't like this. You begin to advocate for yourself when you begin to let your emotions be known. Because again, God is supporting you. God is still guiding you. God got your back. God has your back. And if I could offer a couple of examples on to help you express how you're feeling, to be able to cope with everything that's going on. Two things. One, a movie, Disney's Pixar, Inside Out. It's a kid-friendly movie all the family can enjoy. I think that really gives a good account of how our emotions work hand in hand and how we're able to feel more than one emotion at one time. I think it's a good it's a good little intro, you know, and I also believe that it will help give a little bit more understanding. I don't want to say anything about the movie. I just want you to go check it out if you're able to, even if you can just read the plot um, on Wikipedia or um, some movie page. I encourage you to do that. I also encourage you to type in a search engine the filling wheel or just filling wheel. I picked up the wheel, the filling wheel when I was at clinical pastoral education CPE when I was doing my residency at a hospital. And this filling wheel, I tell you, it has helped me really acknowledge how I'm feeling and to whether I'm speaking to God or I'm journaling or speaking to someone I trust or my therapist, you use the feeling wheel. And an example, you use I statements. You say, I feel happy because my favorite drink is back at my favorite uh, coffee shop. Or I feel betrayed because you did not respect my boundaries. Doing, doing this will help ease some of those emotions when you're able to name them and feel through it. So when you embrace that light and embrace that dark, when you embrace those together, you will be able to move towards your highest good. You're the best version of yourself. You'll be able to now look at different areas of your life and begin to talk about what you feel, how to advocate for yourself. The other thing that I want to point out in our respective journeys, this is not a competition. This is not a competition. It is not a competition. We are not in a race with each other. We are allowed to move at our individual pace. Some of us may feel like we should be further ahead. We should be doing this. I should be married now. I should have these many kids. I should do this. I should have this degree. Breathe. <laughs> breathe, my beautiful people. Breathe. This is not a competition. And I want to be clear. Supporting someone else's success will never ruin yours. 
So when you think about the different areas of your life you're ready to grow and bring change about and to include and embrace, you can do all those things and still be supportive of friends and families, even if, even if you feel led to support strangers. Don't allow comparison to, to steal your joy. When you start looking at others, you begin to minimize and speak negatively to yourself. You're not behind schedule. You didn't miss the you didn't miss the beat. You didn't nothing has changed. You are right where you need to be. And if not, God will get you where you need to be. God is moving on your behalf. This is a collaboration. God God is ready to work with you. And you're like, well, what can I do? What What can I do? I've been told all of my life, like, God is in control, and God got it, and you just have to put your faith in God, and you trust God, and God this, and God got it. I don't know what to do no more. <laughs> like, I'm trying to have this faith. I'm trying to trust. I'm trying to. I feel like I, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing enough. Again, it's okay. I've had those moments too where I feel like I was not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. God said, hey, it's cool. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. We're moving at your individual pace. You will get to where you got to go. All I need you to do it's just make the first step. That's all I need you to do. And some days you can say, God, I don't got it. God, I don't have it. I, I know I'm supposed to have some faith and trust. I do some love and some words. I know I'm supposed to have these things, but today I don't got it. Like I said, God is not intimidated by your emotions. So if you don't feel those things at the moment, it's okay. It's okay. Hear me, my beautiful people. It is okay. And I say this to myself because sometimes I feel like I should be moving a lot faster. Or I should be doing more things. Because now all I said was all I need to do is do X, Y, and Z. And I should be able to go, go, go. But let me tell you something about, let me also talk about the dates. And how there's just numbers, words, December. It's just December. It's the month. That's the month we're in. That's not your starting point. Remember, you don't have we're not starting from scratch. This is a period of reconstruction. This is the period of your life of reconstruction. So whenever you decide to start. Whenever you feel that urge to start that research, that get up and go, that business plan, even if it's just decluttering your house or your home or your apartment, changing your ways of eating, adding more exercise, jump on it and keep moving, keep jumping. Every time it takes, maybe you start day number one, day number two, and you forget the third day. It's okay. Day number four, start over again and keep starting until you hit your goal. Keep starting that start button as many times as you have to. Again, you are moving at your individual pace, not a competition because grace happens. And I thank God for giving us that grace and showing us that mercy and whatever keeps invading the progress or whoever keeps invading that progress, God will deal with accordingly. When that anxiety comes up, start addressing that anxiety with some gratitude, naming things that you are grateful for. When that negative energy starts to hit you, begin to detox your area. Sometimes it's not even about drinking a detox tea for your body. Sometimes it's 
taking a break from social media. Sometimes it's taking a break from certain friends and certain family members. I've heard it across social platforms, social media platforms, uh, almost all year about forgiving people and doing X, Y, and Z. And that's fine. And when you do work on, you know, your relationships with people, I do believe you help someone to talk things out with a therapist. Or someone you trust. And, and like I said, it's all fine. But that all that negative energy began to feed it with optimism. Like, for example, if you feel like somebody is not reaching out to you, like they're not speaking to you. And you just feel like, well, what if, what if they don't want to talk to me? What if they don't care about me? What if they don't want to? What if, what if they just, they just, they just want to speak to me? They're tired or something like that. I encourage you to infuse a little optimism into those negative thoughts, into that negative energy. They may be busy or they may just haven't found time or they may be dealing with things in their life, in their personal life. Anytime there's moments of indifference, Show yourself a little compassion. You are doing the best that you can. And I promise you, if I had time to listen to everyone's story individually, you would tell me stories of pure triumph. I will be overly amazed of how much you have been able to overcome Un up until this point. And now we're at a moment of new challenges where we're experiencing things at different places and different levels. But this is the time for us to go higher. What was working before, what was happening before, was keeping you hidden from the world. And what you do and your contributions to society. Well, you know what? I don't, you know, me personally, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be famous because I, I really don't like I'm I'm more of an introvert and I have my days of being an extrovert. Well, I I, I don't consider myself a public speaker. I don't consider myself to be someone that uh will be on the front lines. I, I don't think I I will be able to protest. breathe because God has a plan for your life and in this plan God desires you to be blessed abundantly and we have to deal with the things that is holding us hostage we have to deal with the people that are holding us hostage. We have to deal with the places that is holding us hostage. That's keeping us from moving to our higher good. Our highest good. Whatever need to be healed has surfaced. And God is letting you know we are bigger than that. You and I. We got this. We're going to move ahead on this journey. And we're going to build a better future for you. I desire for you to be happy, blessed, wealth, health, financial, no more living check to check. You want your dream job, your dream car, your career. You want to start helping the community more. You want to do more than just cash app. $5, Venmo, $3 to help with relief. You want to actually be involved. God will move you into your highest good. Whatever that looks like, those things will become and be revealed to you as you move forward. God is ready and excited about all the great things that is happening in your life and ready to progress forward and all the changes that you want to see with you it starts with you so kudos to those who have already started those business plans 
those changes of their daily routines, incorporating things, taking things out. You found your primary care. You found a therapist. Congratulations. Keep going. Keep moving. For you learning how to say no and not feel guilty about it. For you learning healthy and new boundaries. I am proud of you. Keep going. And if you haven't, today, tomorrow, every day is a good day to start working on you. That all sounds great, but how? Like, is it like something specifically I have to do to get started? No, there's it's, it's nothing because each of your individual journeys looks different. And without trying to pinpoint or like compartmentalize everybody's journey, like if you're doing this or if you're doing that, if you're doing this, then you do X, Y, and Z. If you're doing this, go here and you start here. I'm just here to offer to you that God wants you to make the first step. And God will handle the rest. I'm going to insert another example here about this first step. So I did mention earlier that I was homeless earlier this year. And right now I'm in my new, it's kind of like an apartment condo type situation. I'm happy about it. It's a beautiful place and a nice quiet neighborhood. And I'm very happy, nice and quiet and safe neighborhood. And I'm very excited but when I moved in I had all these boxes from storage and I start unpacking and moving and I threw all the boxes on the back porch and I wasn't feeling my best and I knew I had to declutter the back porch because um the, you know my neighbors aesthetically it just didn't look good with all that junk sitting on the back you all those empty boxes sitting in the back and I had all these broken items and I'm like I, I don't know how I'm gonna get all this to the dumpster like I'm not feeling good and God, I just don't know. So I piled up everything on those boxes. I piled up everything on those boxes and I said, I'm just taking take it one step at a time. Good, get down the stairs and, and drag everything across the street. By the time I got to the bottom of my steps, uh, across from me is a uh, football field. And there's a part where you can like tailgate. So there were some people there just you know, shooting the breeze, and this guy, he comes out of his, he gets out of his car, and he said, oh, ma'am, don't, don't lift those heavy boxes, I'll help you, I'll get those boxes for you, and so another guy said, yeah, I'll help you, and so I didn't even, I barely made it off my back porch while someone came up to help me, and I was like, thank you, God, because I really did not know how I was going to get all that stuff to the trash, so God will address the how of things. You just make the first move. So whatever you want to move, whatever you want to change, whatever you want to see, it's in you. You got this. You can do this. You've been doing it. As a matter of fact, you've been doing it. I'm One of my colleagues is kicking cancer's butt right now. You will not take over my body. I have work to do. A few of my aunt, my mom's best friend, doing the same. It's in you. You got this. God is asking, asking you right now just to take one step. Do it one at a time. You at your own individual pace. And everything will be all right. Everything will work out to move you into your highest good. And I just want to leave you with this meditation uh, by Howard Thurman. And this is something, again, something else I, I hold near and dear to my heart. This meditation, I'm going to read it from my phone. So I'm going to be looking down a little bit. But this has helped me and I, and I just want to share it with you because I feel like it has helped me make some steps and to keep with those steps. The meditation is called God is Present. It's out of his book, Meditations of the Heart. God is present. God is present with me this day. 
God is present with me in the midst of my anxieties. I affirm in my own heart and mind the reality of God's presence. God makes me immediately available to me the strength of their goodness, the reassurance of their wisdom, and the hardiness of their courage. My anxieties are real. They are a result of a wide variety of experiences, some of which I understand and some of which I don't understand. One thing I know concerning my anxieties, they are real to me. Sometimes they seem more real than the presence of God. When this happens, they dominate my mood and possess my thoughts. The presence of God doesn't always deliver me from anxiety, but it always delivers me from anxieties. Little by little, I am beginning to understand that deliverance from my anxiety means fundamental growth in spiritual character and awareness. It becomes a quality of being emerging from deep within, giving to all the dimensions of experience a vast immunity against being anxious. A ground of calm underlies experience, whatever may be the tempestuous or wild character of events. This calm is the manifestation in the in life of the active, dynamic presence of God. God is present with me this day. Everyone under the sound of my voice, even those here in spirit and in the various communities, go in peace and may the strength of God continue to carry you. Repeat after me if you're willing. I release anything that is not for my higher good and ask it to release me. And it is so. Love you all.